as they oh, were moved by the Holy I'm Dan, Ghost. This or Lord Skeptic, Bible and this is, is part the word of God. But two that's only of... according to the book itself. You can't use the uh, Bible to prove the legitimacy the of the Bible. That's called of, circular of my response to Cosmic Skeptic is a percent argument, but accurate. If you haven't seen part one yet, that will be in a pinned comment. Say what you will. Atheists, say what you will. Doubters and deniers, evolutionists, say what you will. This book is scientifically accurate. No, it isn't. If the Bible was scientifically accurate, then we'd be sat nah. on a flat earth. It's not fucking science, but for a start. Old, despite the fact that we have trees that are older than that, with a firmament above it, upon which sit a sun and a moon, which mm, emits its own light, none of which is true. It's mathematically accurate. Wrong again. It's time for a bit more Bible study. 1 Kings 7.23. Then he made the sea of cast metal. It was round, 10 cubits from brim to brim, 5 cubits high, and a line of 30 cubits measured its circumference. A cubit is an old measure of length which equals about 18 modern inches. This part of the Bible describes the construction of something circular. And what this means is that we can measure the ratio between the circumference of the circle to the diameter of the circle. Now this ratio is called pi, and as most people know, in any circle, it has a value of around 3.14. But when we use the values of the measurements in the Bible, pi does not equal 3.14159265358979. So the construction is impossible, or the Bible isn't accurate. And even if it was the first, this would mean that the construction is impossible, therefore it wasn't constructed, and again, the Bible is inaccurate. So whichever way you look at it, I'm afraid the Bible is... No, no I disagree with you here, because a, a problem I have here is... is it might not be con c constructed there, so, I mean, there's something that, that well, there's something circular. It might be considering something that's um, construct oval. Well, it's three dimensional. It might be cons one might be consuming the the the, the, the width might be consuming the outer bit, whereas the or the diameter might be considering like the inner bits as well. It could that could be the thing. Although I'm I'm doing that now, aren't I? <laughs> Resolving that contradiction. <laughs> oh well. Uh, it's still, it's still possible. And maybe just rounding it up because cubits weren't really, really that standard. They were measured by somebody's from just from there to there. So it's not really. Yeah, everyone's a bit different. Anyway, I'll carry on. It's biologically accurate and <laughs> it's a hat trick. You ever heard of evolution? Yes, it may only be a theory, but so is gravity. And if you take a book, maybe your Bible, and drop it on the floor, look, gravity works. And yeah. because you can test gravity any time and anywhere, you believe in it. But evolution takes tens of millions, sometimes hundreds of millions, and even billions of years, which means that you won't be able to personally test it in the same way. But trust me, there's a lot of people on the planet who can. The evidence for evolution is so overwhelming that it's... Now, I'm going to do this again. Because... He didn't really explain the difference in science when a theory is very different. In the in science, when it says as a theory, it just means the highest compliment it can get. Oh, well, that's what he said in another video. Although, it, um, it can get to being a fact. Although, in all fairness, I more feel like the, the fit, like ev gravity and evolution are, are facts, whereas the theory to me is like how it happens. In fact, the everyday usage that we probably would use as theory in science, the word that they would use is hypothesis. That it's mm. almost unanimously regarded as scientific fact. And if you can find one thing, just one thing to disprove evolution, anything, a fossil in the wrong place, for instance, if you can find just one example, then you would revolutionise biology and change the world. But of course, this hasn't happened yet, and the chances of it wouldn't disprove evolution. Theory just that wouldn't disprove evolution. That would just mean that evolution would, they would, it would change how we see evolution. That's all it would do. To corroborate with so much evidence, is so astronomically low that it's not even worth considering as a possibility. And of course, there are literally hundreds of other contradictions with science in the Bible, like the ones I mentioned earlier. But because the origin of life is such an integral part of the Bible, this alone should discredit the scientific value of the book. It's historically accurate. Wrong again. Let me think of an example. It's a bit the Noah's Ark didn't happen. Right there in well, Genesis, yeah, okay. we pretty much have a scientific hypothesis. There was a large flood which caused a mass extinction of most animals on Earth, except for a real flood. species, which then went on to repopulate the Earth. Guess what? 
we can test this. One of my favourite pieces of evidence to disprove this was brought to my attention in the debate between Ken Ham and uh, Bill Nye. Bill Nye mentions that Noah's Ark should have settled somewhere in the Middle East as the floods died down on Earth, which means that the kangaroos would have had to travel from the Middle East to Australia, and yet they left absolutely no trace between the continents. Not to uh, the continents a drift. sea in between them. It's just impossible. It is the very word of God. And I promise you, if you will get into the Bible, what you will find is there are no mistakes. There are well, no contradictions. There are no misquotations. What you'll actually find is around a thousand pages of misogyny, homophobia, fascism, and scientific inaccuracy. But oh, hey, yeah. you know, floats your boat, right? God, Indeed. the Bible says in Titus 1 2, cannot lie. And it if God me. can't lie, and God gave us a book called the Bible, that means this book is filled with nothing but truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Oh, look, we can apply my little test. Allah, yes. the Quran says, cannot lie. And if Allah can't lie, and Allah gave us a book called the Quran, that means that this book is filled with nothing but truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It just doesn't hold up. I will live <laughs> by it, I will stand on it, and I enough. will die by it. And an important thing to note is that that is absolutely fine. If you want to do that, you have every right to. You can believe in whatever you want to believe in. But please don't make a video on YouTube spreading what can only be described as literal untruths to try and get people to join your club. If you have... Now, I'm going to it's... I kind of feel like, in a way, those saying that they're untruths, to me, you know, they're not untruths to him. They're not untruths to the pastor. So, the pastor, so it's, it's, it's what it is, isn't it? So, he's, he's not really, so they're really not untruthful. But in his mind, he's, he's telling the truth. So, yeah. Lie to get people to join you. What does that say about your organization? This book is the very word of God. And ladies and gentlemen, everything I believe, I base on this book right here. I bloody well hope no, not. I and if you do, hope. then I'd like I to hear what fucking hope not. say about that, because I'm sure that they can't be too happy about the fact that you can whip them mercilessly as much as you want, as long as they get up within a few days, and you'll only be punished if they actually die. And if you fucking do actually hell. follow through with everything that the Bible instructs you to do, I'd love to know the time and location of your next stoning of homosexuals, so that... You know, I can call the police and stuff. So guess what? I would have, I Dig fucking would have all. You jolly well please, you'll find no mistakes in this book. The first page. The first I don't page. think so. Because it didn't come from a man. No, you're right. It came from many men using many different sources. Oh yeah, it did. Leading to many different historical accounts, which is what accounts for all the, you know, contradictions. It came oh, yeah. from Almighty God. And that's where your video ends. But I need to reiterate, it's absolutely fine for you to believe in whatever you want to believe in, but please do not spread scientific and historical inaccuracies to the <laughs> world. Now, a lot of people might ask, Alex, why are you attacking religion? Why are you trying to promote atheism and saying that God isn't real? Well, there are two reasons for this. Firstly, there's a bit of a double standard going on, and that's that if a Christian decides to make a video saying, you need to believe in God, the Bible is true, and Christianity is the way forward, they'll be respected. Whereas if I do the exact same thing, saying God isn't real, the Bible isn't true, and that atheism is the way forward, I'm seen as some kind of ignorant bigot. That's Same if I do the same with paganism. Stop. Secondly, this kind of blatant Latent scientific inaccuracy stifles scientific endeavor like no other influence. What if a young child who would have later gone on to study biology and found a cure for cancer was stopped at a young age because they believed that they didn't need to go into medicine because God had all the answers? What if Einstein yeah, would have I mean, stopped formulating his theories when he realized that they didn't line up with the biblical narrative? I what know. if all of the academic sciences, including physics, chemistry, biology, maths, uh, geology, all decided to shut down because they didn't need to do any research because all of the answers are in the Bible. The world would fall to shit, that's what would happen. Indeed so it this would. this is why I will tackle scientific inaccuracy wherever I find it. Having a scientifically literate general public is one of the best things that this world could have. I and have so to I agree with you, even though I think... feel bad about criticizing science... someone's beliefs if they can lead to such negative consequences. But anyway, I have been Alex O'Connor, or Cosmic Skeptic. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you... You do that with my channel as well. I don't normally say that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, I can agree with them about the science thing, even though I do feel like that science doesn't always get it right. But then again, I feel at least the science can admit when they got it wrong. I do. I feel like at least science admits when it gets when it got it wrong, at least, and it fucked up and everything and what have you. It, meets, it admits when it does that, and they can just scrap it and add it down again rather than the Bible, rather than 
and, and the Bible they say others will twist it round to say it meant something different. So I can say that's wrong. We'll we'll redo it, and that and that's what I like about that—the fact that they can admit it, it's wrong. Anyway, I'm. I don't say, I, oh, right before that, I'm not saying I don't believe in science. I do. I just, you know, it doesn't get, get it right. I, I don't think religion does either, but not that I think religion gets it right either. Now, now that's what I'm saying really now. Now, what I'm saying now is I'm Dan, or Lord Skeptic, and in the words of Bill and Ted, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. <laughs>